So, well, good morning to everyone in the live training room and everyone on YouTube. Uh, let's get right at it because it's going to be a busy, busy day. We have the markets gapping up. Um, I was telling everyone in the live training room and just in Discord in general, actually, um, I'm showing a, a daily chart on the NASDAQ and you've got a quadruple bottom, assuming if today's rally holds, right? There goes GameStop breaking out. Um, so with that being said, guys, I think uh, I think from a swing perspective, you could start buying a lot of stocks uh, to swing. And the ones that I'm looking at specifically, Apple, Nvidia, Tesla, you can look at Peloton. There's, there's so many different stocks that you can add into your portfolio and buy into it. I'm not saying throw the kitchen sink at these names. I'm saying scale into the positions, right? Um, you know, my recommendation, if you want to scale into positions, don't, allo don't allocate more than 5% per each stock and hold on to cash because if the market does sell off and we get maybe a nastier pullback, you have cash on the sidelines, right, to add into these positions. When I swing, I, I really use the mentality of portfolio management. Um, so that's just my preference of swinging and it, it keeps all with the idea of protecting my money because I've worked hard to build my account. So I don't want to give it all back to the market if, if we get more sell off. So that's just my overall um, um, just kind of method of swinging. However, um, Apple <clears throat> is going to be on my A-list for today. Apple is a name that uh, if you look here on the daily chart has come very very close to its 200 day moving average RSI right now with pre-market data is at 37 and It's gapping up to 119 bucks ADMA on the daily is at 121.64. I think I think Apple can reclaim yesterday's highs. I think that, that that's not unrealistic that would be probably one of my first targets on Apple. So like the 121, 122 range on Apple um, could be could be a very fair uh, price target if the market really gets a rally in today. If you guys saw um, unusual, uh, not unusual options, but there are um, a lot of open interest, right? Where, where did I, I think I, I placed that here in the Discord. Uh, where are you? I placed unusual, uh, not unusual options, but there's a huge open interest, right? And a lot of it is being played with, with Apple. There's a lot of open interest on call options with Apple. So Apple is going to be a play for me today. As long as Apple holds the 118, you know, 50 range, I'm going to go long Apple. And, and uh, my first target is going to be like 119, 70, 120. So I like Apple a lot. Um, Tesla is going to be another name that I'm going to keep a very close eye on today. I, I was hoping that it would hold the 598 area for a breakout. It's already popped, you know, almost 10 points from that zone. So we're going to have to wait for a bull flag setup. I think Tesla can definitely reclaim yesterday's highs, which would be about the 620 zone. Um, if the market decides to sell off, I mean, I would have to see Tesla fail like the 598 area before I want to look for a short entry on it. But I am long biased on both Apple and Tesla today. Um, <clears throat> I'm also going to keep an eye on FSR. FSR came out with some interesting news that uh, they had about 40,000 reservations, right, for uh, the Ocean SUV. And you saw the stock pop up uh, to 2365 in pre-market. It did pull back a little bit, just 40 cents. But I like it. If we start seeing a big rally on FSR. I'm definitely going to be in it. Uh, yesterday's highs was 23.65. I mean, 56. So we're only 30 cents away from that. Pulled out a daily chart on FSR, and it's actually held itself pretty well, given the fact that the market has been selling off aggressively. So I like it. I think we can get we can get a nice rally on it today, especially if we see some good volume on FSR. So I'm going to keep this on my A list as well. Um, another name, GameStop. GameStop, I know I briefly touched on it. So GameStop, it, it, it's just, it's back alive. I mean, you can't short this. You can't short this thing. GameStop is just uh, on a rip. So I'm, right now, I kind of, I, I like this area that it's holding. It, uh, 
Here's the thing about GameStop, you're gonna have to give it a range. So I would prefer a pullback on GameStop to like the 220 zone, bottoming tail bar, go long. I would prefer that type of action, but if GameStop just rips out of the gates, we're just gonna have to kind of be patient and wait for a good entry point on GameStop. Be careful with GameStop, because sometimes when you get into the stock, you have to give it five, 10 points range. It's, it's just that big of a mover. So be very careful with it, but it's gonna be in play. Pre-market highs was 237. I think we're gonna break out of that easily, easily today. Um, another name that I'm gonna keep an eye on is uh, Mara. Why? Because Bitcoin is on a freaking tear right now. If you guys are in Bitcoin with me, then congratulations. Uh, Bitcoin right now is sitting at, let me see, where are we at? 54,665 at the current moment. We're only 2,000 points away from all-time highs. Uh, I think Mara is definitely going to get a nice rally on it today because of the Bitcoin move. So I'm going to keep a very close eye on it. Another name I'm going to keep a close eye on is Roku. Why Roku? It's a tech name that has gotten hit pretty hard. And it's already popping up, uh, you know, a little bit. Th this move is, is kind of what I wanted. It was, you know, flagging nicely at like the 340 zone. It's already popped, you know, seven, eight points. So I'm going to put Roku on my B list for now, but Roku is definitely a name that I'm going to keep a very, very close eye on. Um, other names, Neo. I really like Neo, um, and I'm sure Taj was probably going to bring it up, but Neo is one of the most oversold EV names, and along with you know XPEV and LI. And some interesting news came out this morning. I'm not sure if you guys saw it, but... Neo, LI, and XPEV, they're all considering to go public on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. That's really good. Why? Because if they go public in the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, that gives them more access to capital. That's really good for companies, especially like Neo and all these other EV names that need more funding to grow their business and to invest strategically. Um, and considering that Neo is oversold, I like it. I think it's going to definitely be in play today. Yesterday, it hit a high of 39.45, right? So, and the low yesterday was what? 34. So, we're right smack in the middle of that range. So, I want to see if Neo can break out of this pre-market high. And if it does, I'm going to be in it with some call options. So, um, with that being said, let me see if there are some other names. There's a lot of names. Oh, one, one other name I want to bring up. SFIX. SFIX reported earnings and it, it was just like horrendous, absolutely horrendous. It's gap, it was gapping down at one point like over 20%. It got a 20% haircut from yesterday's closing price. So I pulled up a daily chart and look at this thing. If you look specifically, what I'm looking at is the gap that it can close down here to December 8th of last year. If we start seeing a sell-off on SFIX, I am definitely going to go short on this. And I think this can fill the gap to 48.63. But what's interesting is that uh, an analyst came out and gave it a price target of only $60. So even though $60 is above the current trading price uh, for SFIX, it's not a very bullish uh, analyst, analyst note in my opinion. Uh, they had it at 55, Needham had it at 55 and raised it, you know, to 60. And, uh, remember this is a 12 month price target. So the fact that, um, that's the only one that I saw that came out, uh, you know, on behalf of SFIX, let me just double check that statement. Uh, yeah, at least on my scanner here, that's the only one. Let me check one other area where I can look to see if there was any other price targets on SFIX. Okay, there was, oh, okay. Uh, Piper Sandler came out, gave it a $47. BMO Capital gave SFIX $40. Uh, let me see, is there anyone that stands out? Nope, that's it. Oh, Deutsche Bank gives it 54. Key Bank adjusted their price target to 75. So, Key Bank is the most bullish one out of all of the ones that I've seen here. But what do you see with all the other price targets? They're below that gap, that 48.63 that I'm eyeing. So, um, I am short biased SFIX today. If I can find a nice entry point to short this sucker, 
I'm gonna look at like the $54 range or $53.86. If it breaks below that, especially if it does break below $53, I'm shorting it. And my first price target is going to be um, the after hours lows of 50 bucks. If this thing breaks below 50 bucks, it's gone. It's gone. So, and I will definitely be in that short. So, with that being said, those are my primary names I'm gonna keep an eye on today. So, Taj? Yeah, so, uh, you know, to piggyback off the Apple idea, you know, uh, we were calling for this yesterday. If Apple, you know, came down to that 200 MA on the, on the daily chart, you know, I was just gonna take a straight swing at it. I didn't care how Apple reacted because. Um, anytime you have a stock approaching the 200 in May, it's going to be a great buying opportunity as long as it's a formidable name, right? As long as it's a, a legit name. Mm -hmm. um, so with that being said, I may just take a swing on Apple today. I kind of want to see how it reacts in the morning mm -hmm. first, um, right out of the gates. Um, but I do plan on swinging Apple. My game plan as now is to go out um, about 38 to 45 days on my options contracts. Um, so, you know, that's the thing with these these swings. If, if you are gonna swing this, just please be sure to go out at least a month um, on these options contracts, just to make sure that time decay is not hurting you. Um, so uh, I just wanted to recommend that for any swing that you all wanna take with options contracts, just go out at least a month. So. You're, you don't have any problems with uh, with the time decay that'll, that'll take an effect. Uh, but other than that, I'll be looking uh, to do the same for Neo. If Neo has another pullback, I'll be looking to get into a, a swing as well. Uh, but as of now, I, I won't do that unless it does swing back, swing back down. Um, a couple other names I want to add to the watch list, um, some names I'll be watching, um, is AMC. Um, AMC is getting a gap up along with the Bitcoin as well. So it looks like some of these names are, um, you know, getting a little hype here. It's pretty much trading identical uh, to Bitcoin hand in hand. So, you know, if you're looking at Bitcoin, it's too expensive for you, or maybe the contracts are too expensive. By the way, I highly recommend to not trade GameStop contracts because the spreads can be extremely wide. Yeah. Um, $2, sometimes even $3, depending on which expiration date you're going with. Um, check out AMC. AMC always has really good spreads. And it moves very similarly to uh, to uh, GameStop. So the way I see it right now, it's actually bull flagging right here. It starts to break out above 947. We can look for a long throw. Our stops around 940, 944, and see if we can get a pop up to the pre market high at 962. If we do break above 962, there's no resistance until around 11. dollars mm. so I'm actually go ahead and add a drawing here. There's no resistance until 11 dollars on AMC. So you're looking at about, you know, thus far around, let's say a 10 cent risk, max 20 cent risk for a potential, you know, dollar fifty, dollar sixty run on a name. Um, so AMC looks really good. Like I said, if you can't trade GameStop, keep an eye on AMC because a lot of these names are starting to pick back up. Um, another name I'll be keeping a very close eye on is T R I T. So. This stock actually has some really good news come out. They are collaborating with Western Union, Western Union on trading finance. So their, their shares are up, um, I believe about 25%, 20-25%. Um, we had a, some really good volume come in. Volume is decent uh, right now. Um, it's a chief name that does offer monthly options contracts. So the way it's being traded right now, Oh, well, it's breaking out of a bull flag right now. I was going to say, if it starts to break out above 812, 811, 812, um, you can look to go long the stock. But um, it's starting to happen right now. So we'll, we'll have to wait for it unless we get some consolidation here. But as of now, long was right here at 812. 30 stops around 780. And see if we can break out to that, uh, that pre-market high of 848. If we do break above 848, I mean, this thing has, you know, probably $9, $9.20 uh, before it really starts to run into some resistance. Um, so just keeping that eye on this, I think this is a name that, um, you know, anytime you're partnering with a company like Western Union, you know, it's a, you know, pretty, pretty big name, um, you're, you're going to have some, uh, some reaction, right? It's going to be a real reaction. Um, so I do expect this to uh, hold, you know, if I had to 
rub my crystal ball and make a guess, I would say, you know, this is probably going to hold, and we're going to see some uh, some good price action happen. So I'll be keeping a really close eye on uh, on TRIT. Um, another name I'll be watching, obviously, the overall market. Alex already went into detail about it. Um, you know, you had a triple bottom on the queues, you had a double buy bottom on the spies, and the market's getting a nice pop here. The spies are up about four points today. Um, we had some nice continuation yesterday from that from that bottom, and I expect the spies to continue this rally, the overall market to continue this rally. So the good thing about that is, very similarly to the past a week or so, you can pretty much choose your favorite names, guys. Again, you know, if you like to trade Apple, if you like to trade the spies, if you like to trade the Qs, if you like to trade Neo, pick your favorite names and watch those because a lot of these names are going to be moving. A lot of stocks are gapping up. Um, in unison, so that lets you know the entire market is going to be moving as a whole. With that being said, another name I'll be watching is Space, Virgin Galactic. So Virgin Galactic is um, bouncing right off of that 200 MA from a couple days ago. It did sell off a bit yesterday. It tried to rally. Closed actually near its lows, but if you're looking at today, it's actually gapping up closer to the highs than it is from the lows. Uh, the highs yesterday were 29.62. We're gapping up right now currently to $28.22. And what I really like about Virgin Galactic, as I've said over the past couple of days, is that it's bouncing literally right off of the 200 MA. Mm -hmm. 200 MA was at 24.58. The low from a couple of days ago was 23.94. So it dipped 40, 50 cents below the uh, 200 MA. And guess what? Bottoming tail bar form. And what do we have happening over the past couple of days? We have some some follow through happening. So as of now, Spate, Virgin Galactic is bull flagging and trading um, pretty high, pretty close to the uh, the highs, the pre market highs. If it starts to break back above twenty eight thirty, we can look for a long throw our stops around twenty eight ten or so and see if we can test. Let's say you know yesterday's high around twenty nine thirty, twenty nine sixty. Um, so you have plenty of room for the stock to run uh, from a risk reward perspective right out of the gates. Uh, so Virgin Galactic is going to be a, a stock that I'm going to be watching. Very, very closely today. Um, the last name I'll go over is, uh, X, actually two more names, is uh, XPEV. Um, so if you if you like NEO, XPEV is going to be another good name to keep an eye on as well. Um, XPEV, as we know, reported earnings um, yesterday during the pre-market hours. But what actually came out today is they actually had a price target upgrade. Um, one of the analysts, Daiwa Securities, um, actually had XPEV set as a sell and converted it to uh, a buy with a price target of $34. Granted, XPEV is trading at $29. It was trading around $27 yesterday. So we're having a two-point gap up. But, you know, to actually miss on your earnings and then start to have some price target upgrades um, and be in an oversold condition, if we're looking at XPEV from yesterday's close, the RSI was at 21.27. So it's extremely oversold, and having news like this, like a price target upgrade coming out, um, it's going to be really good for the stock. So as of now, XPEV, if it starts to break out above twenty nine forty, we can look to go long with stops around twenty nine dollars. We're looking at about a forty cent risk. Maybe we can test yesterday's high thirty sixty five. That's an easy one to one, or actually more than one to one play, closer to two three to one play, um, right out of the gates on XPEV. So keep an eye on that as well if you enjoyed trading XPEV. But I do believe NEO is going to be trading very similarly to NEO, uh, to XPEV. So don't feel like you're missing out on it too much if you're watching NEO. The last name I'll be bringing up is Eyes. It's a stock that we watched yesterday. Um, just went on an insane run during the uh, pre-market hours. The stock closed at $11, $11.77 yesterday. Ran all the way up to $26.00. In the pre-market hours, um, it has had a significant pullback down to 19 bucks. However, if you're looking at the overall move, it's still, you know, it's only about a 50% retracement, um, which is, is kind of crazy. But the way I see it, if I starts to reclaim 21.30, 21.40, you can definitely look to go long. However, if it starts to break below 18.40, you could possibly look for a short. Uh, the only thing I'll say about EYES is there are no options contracts available to trade, so you will have to trade it with outright equity with shares. 
Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, if you're able to trade it with shares, if you have the capital to trade with shares, by all means, you know, keep an eye on it because the volume is very heavy on this thing. <clears throat> I mean, a lot of these candlesticks are putting in half a million shares every five minutes. So it's going to be something that's very active today. Um, so if you can, keep an eye on it. Mark those levels up and uh, keep an eye on it. Uh, but other than that, that's pretty much going to do it for my list. And I really like what AMC is doing here. We just had a nice bounce here. So... If I could add to the to the EYES, also keep in mind that the daily RSI is at 94.75, including pre-market data. So that means when it was at like 26, the RSI must have been at like maybe 100. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so just be very, very careful with trying to swing this one. Because I know a lot of people, you know, want to get on those diamond hands, but those diamond hands can hurt, right? Um, if, if you try to, if you think that this thing is going to rip some more, so just be cautious, be cautious. Um, I got burned on EYES yesterday. It was my biggest loser yesterday. So for me personally today, I ain't touching it. The, and the only reason why I'm not touching it is because Merrill Edge won't allow me to freaking short it. So I can't, I can't short EYES. So for me, like that already eliminates 50% of the opportunities for me. So if, I, if my only option is to go long, then I'd just rather not play with it. Um, hell of a move in pre-market, man. My goodness. Um, but yeah, I, I, Taj, I like your AMC. I'm actually going to put AMC on my A-list for today. Um, it's such a small risk. Such a small right. risk on this one. And if it has, if it wakes up and has any remote, like, uh, energy like GME has, uh, the payoff can be pretty big on AMC. So I, I like that, man. I'm going to put that one on my A-list for today. Uh, tr tr trigger for AMC? Uh, I mean, $9 and like 55 Like if it breaks that pre-market, like that little high right there, and then, you know, nine sixty, and then like Taj said, no resistance until 11 bucks. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's one of those plays that's worth the shot. This momentum is real. Um, you know, the risk reward is just yeah. great right here, right? Yeah. Um, so exactly. we'll see, see how it reacts in the morning. You know, obviously it has to trigger and then follow through. But right. nonetheless, it has a really good risk reward. And that's all we can do as day traders, right? Find those good risk reward opportunities. Exactly. So with that being said, everyone on YouTube, thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you all later.